Hi, and welcome back. So in a recent study that tested five anti-aging compounds, it was found that two of them, as it says in the report, significantly diminished the predicted age. Now, I found that particularly interesting because I do, as part of my longevity stack, take both of these specific compounds. Let's get into it. This is a review of a piece I read that was penned by Brett T. Weiss, where he covers a study that was published in the journal Computational and Structural Biotechnology, which looked into a number of compounds and their ability to slow the aging process. And there are links in the description below to the studies and the articles I used to put this presentation together. The world has a rapidly expanding population of people over the age of 65 and this has of late been dubbed the silver tsunami. Life expectancy has increased dramatically in the past 150 years. It's expected that worldwide 1.5 billion people aged 65 or over will outnumber adolescents and youth aged between 15 and 24 years of age and that's 1.3 billion by the year 2050. People aged 65 years and older are experiencing the aging process characterized by progressive impairment and loss of physiological integrity and function leading to an increased vulnerability of death. It is without question the world is facing an aging challenge. Currently, scientists in the anti-aging research field continue to gauge and compare how fast people age with newly devised aging clocks to enable research on the most effective means to combat the ravages of aging. This will require a standardized measurement of aging. Many in the aging research field are now turning towards transcriptomics, measuring RNA sequences as an indicator of gene activity. By using transcriptomics to assess people's pace of aging, we can now compare compounds that have previously been shown to counter aging in animal studies. Published in the journal Computational and Structural Biotechnology, Hongwei Ouyang PhD and his colleagues from Zhejiang University School of Medicine in China have generated a transcriptomics based aging clock. Using their clock, they demonstrated that applying NMN or metformin to blood samples reduced the predicted age. Their biological aging clock also differentiates between slow, average and fast aging individuals based on their chronological age. The team identified that slow aging individuals exhibit blood immune cell levels indicative of less inflammation than fast aging individuals. The development of this new aging clock may help the anti-aging scientists in their quest for a standardized means to measure biological aging, which can then be used for comparing compounds that can potentially increase the amount of years that we have in good health. And this is known as our health span. The genes coded in our DNA are transcribed to mRNA before being translated into a protein. So by measuring mRNA levels, gene activity can be assessed. The transcriptome encompasses the most active genes at a given time. The researchers analyzed the blood cell transcriptomes of 505 individuals aged between 18 and 68 and found that 1,138 mRNA transcripts had significantly changed with age. Using statistical analysis, the team used the mRNA transcript levels to determine gene activity and predict biological age, this being a person's physiological age in relation to their age-matched counterparts. In doing so, Dr. Wu Yang and his colleagues found that people could be divided into three populations, slow, average, and quick aging. For example, individuals with a biological age younger than their chronological age were considered as slow aging individuals. To find out whether the slow, average and quick aging categorizations translated to physiological parameters like less inflammation, Dr. Wu Yang and his colleagues measured immune cell levels in the blood. 
they found that the slow aging population had a higher ratio of lymphocyte to neutrophil immune cells. This was when compared to the fast aging participants and this is indicative of less systemic inflammation. These findings suggest that the slow, average and quick aging categories may reflect the amount of inflammation that can be found in someone's body. Since the China-based researchers developed their aging clock to compare compounds that might counter aging, they decided to test five compounds. These were nicotinamide mononucleotide, metformin, curcumin, aspirin and resveratrol. After incubating the blood samples overnight with each of the compounds, they then tested them with the anti-aging clock. NMN and metformin significantly diminished the predicted age. Although incubating blood samples with age-deterring compounds may not directly translate to the effects of consuming them, these results provide some evidence that NMN and metformin may slow the aging process. Professor Hongwei Uyang of Zhejiang University's School of Medicine said, our aging clock succeeded in evaluating the rejuvenation effect of molecules such as NMN and metformin in vitro. Now, while the findings in this publication may be somewhat of a far cry from what happens in the body when consuming NMN or metformin, they do provide some evidence that these compounds confer health span related benefits. A more rigorous, albeit time and resource consuming study could focus on comparing people's biological age before and after taking these compounds for perhaps a year of daily consumption. The authors declare that they have no known competing financial interests or personal relationships that could have appeared to influence the work reported in this paper. And if you are looking for a reputable supplier to buy your NMN from, or you're looking to change your current supply because they may be, for instance, too expensive, check out Renew Buy Science and Pro Health Longevity. And if you do buy from one of these, please feel free to use the code MYNMN at checkout to get between 10 and 15% off. And there are links in the description below to these companies' NMN products. So I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. It did say in the study that although incubated blood samples with age deterring compounds may not directly translate to the effects of consuming them, these results provide some evidence that NMN and metformin may slow the aging process. Now, the naysayers will say that this is not so because it was an in vitro study and therefore can't prove that it prevents aging in humans. And the more optimistic people like myself will say, well, it's definitely not a negative result. And remember what Andrew Huberman says about longevity. Just to take a step back, I know a lot of people out there, are like if there isn't a double blind placebo controlled trial, you know, random, random trial, then why would you ever take something? And then there are a lot of people like David or me or a lot of people out there who think, well, if there are some mouse data or something safe, why wouldn't I try? Right? Because when it comes to longevity, nobody wants to be in the control group. 